Welcome. Today is Tuesday, March 14th, 2023. I'm Steve Shields, president of Royal Asiatic Society Korea. We're glad that you've joined us. We welcome those of you who are here in the room with us, and we welcome you who are joining us on Zoom. We're really excited to be in our new venue tonight. We're here in downtown Seoul at Coat, K-O-T-E. And uh, we're right at the entrance to uh, Insadong. Uh, Coat is a multifaceted cultural space. Uh, and it's multiple buildings. This building that we're in here, the building there, the building over there, the courtyard in the middle. And at the end of the walkway, as you came in this way, is the Chosun Salon. And uh, they serve uh, light uh, food, coffee, beer, wine. And uh, you know, next time, come early and have a bite to eat there and then stay late and drink some more or something like that. Uh, we're, we're partnering with Coat. We're not just a renter in somebody's space. Uh, we're partnering with them. We've agreed to support each other's mission as much as is feasible, uh, promoting our activities for their folks, their activities to us. Uh, and so you may see along the way in our emails and whatever and some other events that are going on here in this uh, facility. We're very much appreciative of uh, Anju Yang, who is the managing director of COPE, and especially her associate, Kang Jun Suk, who handles the logistics of the people who are using the space uh, here. Yeah. We express our sincere gratitude to Asia Development Foundation for their continued sponsorship. I'm also very happy to announce that we have finalized a date with the British Embassy for our 123rd annual Founders Day celebration, otherwise known as the Garden Party. We could not, of course, have known last summer when we were working with the British Embassy that uh, the uh, Queen would leave us and the new King would be taking the throne. So we didn't have any idea that there would be a coronation in May, plus the official monarch's birthday in June. And uh, so the ambassador has asked us if we could possibly have our garden party in September. So we've set the date of September 16th, which is a Saturday. Go ahead and get that on your calendars. We'll get more information out later. Uh, we expect to avoid the heat that we sometimes have in the late spring when we've had our parties in the ambassador's garden. And uh, we'll hopefully avoid the rain in June that we seem to be getting lately too. Transactions, however, will be published on schedule in June, and we'll make those available at the lectures for members who want to pick up a copy, uh, or members can drop by the office once it's published and pick up their copy. Uh, we'll announce all the specifics of that when we get that uh, published. You're cordially reminded that lecture content does not necessarily reflect the opinions or positions of the Royal Asiatic Society in Korea. Tonight, we are joined by our longtime RAS Korea council member and, and our resident poet and philosopher, Jeremy Seligson. Uh, Jeremy, uh, trained as a lawyer, born in Washington, D.C., trained as a lawyer, just realized uh, today that his Peace Corps service was not here in Korea, but it was in Ethiopia where he helped write the Land Reform Act that caused the overthrow of the emperor or something like that, was it? Uh, Jeremy is a former professor at the uh, Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Some people call it HUPS, and most of us call it WED. Um, so, and he's been an adjunct professor at Yonsei University for many years. Uh, Jeremy's the author of Oriental Birth Dreams, 
in Queen Jin's Handbook of Pregnancy. And he's working now on the Dragon Dreams trilogy, which we hope we'll see sometime in the not too distant future. Do you have a timeline on that yet? No, no you're working on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, as usual, after the lecture, we'll have some time for questions. And so without any further ado, let's give Jeremy a warm welcome and listen to the, what was it called? The clucking of the golden chicken. Yes, there we are. Yeah. Jeremy. I'm very happy to be here. I was going to uh, read uh, parts of my journal, but I think I'll talk about it more. It might uh, be easier. Uh, during the uh, COVID time, which is still going on now, but uh, I, I was uh, mostly isolated. Uh, I isolated myself and uh, I, I lived near uh, Ansan, which is behind Yonsei University. And uh, I would go onto the mountains almost every day and climb at Ansan, and, and mostly uh, in the nighttime you know, when nobody else was there. So I, I didn't have to wear a mask. And, and because we live in the city, and the city lights reflect off the clouds, you don't really need a flashlight in the mountains. Your eyes can adjust and you can see the pathways. In fact, uh, flashlight is a hindrance because it narrows your vision right in front of you and you can't see the sides very well. But if you don't have a flashlight, you can see all over. And at night and winter, you can see the silhouettes of the trees. The trees are all naked. But they don't have leaves and they're so shapely. They're, they're like pieces of sculpture. And we don't need to go to a museum to see beauty, sculptural beauty. We can just go to the mountain. And I read recently that if we walk in the mountain, our immune system gets about 20% stronger because we get used to breeding the bacteria in the mountain. So it's very healthy, not only walking and getting our heart rate going, it said that we should walk about 8,000 steps a day. But uh, it's good for our, our mind that we can see, especially up in this mountain, because it's planted at random. Not like many forests. Many forests have just one species of tree, like pine tree, and they're, they're, they're planted in order and rows. But this Anzan used to be uh, completely denuded, except for a few elm trees. That's why uh, Horace Underwood uh, III told me that uh, it was called Lone Tree Mountain, because there was only one, one tree there. And, uh, but actually there were about three or four elm trees around Bowan Sa, Bowan Temple, the big uh, uh, Buddhist temple on the mountain, which used to be where Yonsei University is. When uh, President Park gave, uh, not President Park, when King uh, Kojong gave uh, the land for the university, I think it's 1895, uh, Bowan Sa was at the bottom of the mountain. And then it was moved up when the, the university began with the college at that time. And uh, if you go there, you'll see 350 year old elm trees. So I would uh, walk almost every night and sometimes at nine o'clock, sometimes 10 o'clock, sometimes at midnight. And uh, midnight is the very best time to walk in the mountain because the sounds of the traffic die down. And there's no animals up there or awake in the middle of the night at midnight. It's so quiet. It's so calm. 
you feel like you're in a different place, like in a cathedral or a church. And you can see also at different times of the afternoon and evening when the colors of the sky are changing. After sunset, it's, it's, it's gold and, 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 and yellow and, and blue and gray. And you see the trees silhouetted against the different color sky. And that's also particularly beautiful. The, uh, I've lived on this mountain for about 20 years. So the trees have grown a lot since I've been there. And because it was denuded, partly because people needed uh, fuel from the trees, and the Japanese uh, occupiers also needed, needed wood for their uh, war in Manchuria. The uh, President uh, Sigmund Rhee initiated Arbor Day for the first time. And he told it was it's a patriotic duty for the people to go to the mountain and plant a tree. The people did not plant trees in an organized way. They planted them in a random way. And all kinds and varieties of trees. So that's why it's called a, a natural forest and a traditional Korean forest, because that's what a traditional Korean forest is. Even traditional Korean garden is, is planted in such a way that it looks natural. It looks like it's from the wild. So when we go up to Ansan in the spring, in the summer, in the autumn, almost every day you see new plants leafy, okay, uh, new flowers coming out. And, and so it's never the same, it's always different. And different insects coming out, you know, crickets and, and uh, cicadas and, and moths. The, uh, unfortunately, recently, many insects have been dying in Korea, especially bees. There used to be many bees around up there among the acacia trees, but this rarely you can find bee these days. And I think it's because of the insecticides and mosquito uh, spraying and, uh, and such things. So that's uh, very bad for the plants, very bad for the flowers because they need the bees to pollinate the flowers. But uh, in the summer, if you walk on Ansan in the middle of the night along the ridge, there's nobody there, but there are thousands of crickets. And the crickets are going. <laughs> you feel like you're swimming in the sea. It, it's somewhat marvelous. And then from up there, you can see all the lights of the city and the lights of, and the, on the bridges on the Han River. And this around in Wansan, which is right across the valley from, uh, from uh, Ansan, across the old Beijing road, people used to take to go to China. It's a Dongnet moon now. The, uh, you can see the old city wall going around the slopes and it's lit up gold and it looks like a dragon climbing around in Wansan when you look from Wansan. So that's quite a sight to see after dark. Uh, and when this, during the, during the spring, because I'll start with spring, just before spring, around now, the, uh, you go up in the mountain in a warm day, around 6.30, you start hearing strange sounds like, <laughs> and those are 
I, I thought they're wild Indians or something like that. They turned out to be frogs. So many frogs, they come out at that time and start mating. And they have a lot of false alarms. So they come out and they make a lot of noise and then it gets cold. And they go back into hibernation. And then the, the land thaws and they come out and they sing again. So every once in a while I hear the frogs and those are my first companions when I'm walking. In, in, the, in the end of winter, beginning of spring. So, and now you can see all the birds have come back. The birds are here. The, uh, the magpies and the crows, and they have the, uh, what do you call it? The water magpies, the uh, murakachi. Ever hear of that, the water magpies? They've got the silver blue blue feathers. And my bird book said they fly in flocks of 70 birds. And when I first saw them, there were 70 of them. They, they were landing on the cypress trees across the street from me, where I live. So I, I should tell you about how I got there. And my wife and I were living on the other side of Ansan in the, renting a, a, a room in Yonido. And my daughter was going to Seoul Foreign School. And then one day my wife said, why are we wasting money on rent? Why don't you go buy a house? And, and she was actually yelling at me. So I got in, the, I said, okay. So I got in a taxi and I, I went over the hill to the neighborhood that I liked. The, near near Moan Temple. And I went to the real estate agent and I said, do you have a house? And he said, I have a house, a big house, a little house. He said, let me see the big house. That time I had a little bit of money and it was a big old house. And the uh, renter there said that this house used to be owned and built by the founder of the pottery department at Danbrook University. Well, my wife graduated from the pottery department at Danbrook University. And, and, and so I called her and I said, I found a house. She said, you found a house in five minutes? I said, yes, I'll come and get you. you know? And I brought her over and she was complaining all the way over. But when she stood in front of the house, she became very quiet. This is a nice house. And, and she said she had had a dream that she had dug up 300 pots in, 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 the, in the ground on that side of the mountain. So that, that woman, the woman who built the house, moved further up the hill and built a very big house in a kiln in a pottery studio on the side of the mountain. And her students used to come there. Uh, she she passed away, and the uh, the son had this beautiful house, and the, uh, the there was a bridge and a kiln all torn down, and he was going to build a five story student apartment building. So one day I went to this uh, the ruins of the house, and there was a line. Uh, blocking off people from trespassing. And I jumped over the, something made me go in. I jumped over and I walked around. And there, was, there was shards of pottery. And I found the old kiln and I put my hand down and I'll show you what I found. Under my hand, was this. It's a tokebi, I think. And I, I felt that it was telling me, you know, take me home. It was saying, take me home. So I thought, well, they're just going to tear this whole place down and it's going to be destroyed. So I took it home. Obviously, I took it home. <laughs> Yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah. And next door to 
him was a uh, famous Confucian scholar and uh, next to the pottery woman. And, and once they started building the house, he moved away and didn't come back again. His house is still there. And the other side of him is a theologian, a famous theologian who is 99 years old. And uh, I, uh, when I first arrived, his wife had died and I watched his wife being carried down the stairs as he lived across the street from me. His wife had been a, an activist for the comfort women and used to, used to uh, go to Japan and demonstrate. And I, he looks like uh, old Taoist with the beard, you know, and long brown hair. But his hair still wasn't white. You know, he's 99 years old. He, he, he did uh, 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 Tai Chi every morning. Maybe that was his secret. And uh, when she died, I could see out of my window because I could look into his garden. So I saw him every day. And he was walking it around with his hands behind his back with a big strong hat and just walking it in a circle like that. Like thinking. That was how he dealt with his wife's, his wife's passage. And we became friends. And uh, I dreamt of him. I dreamt of him climbing the top of a tree and painting the sky all different colors. Because actually he was a watercolor painter. He had traveled around the world and drew pictures in watercolors of the scenes around. So, and, and, and it was just a few, like a couple of months ago, I met him and he you know, had always seen me and he said, I thought you left Korea, you know? And, and then he invited me one day, I visited his house and, uh, and he, he was living on Spam and rice. That's what in coffee, but he was 99 years old and he was healthy. I was, I was, I was amazed at that. And uh, then one day I saw him standing on his wall, by his wall, looking over the lilac bushes in front of his house, the lilac tree. And their cement trucks were going up and down going to the old potter's house, building the new student apartment. And I could see something was working in his brain. And he moved out to live with his son in another town. And I didn't hear of him for a couple of months. And then my wife found his picture in an obituary in the newspaper. He had walked out of his house in, in the other town, I think it was maybe Daejeon, and he fell and he was in a hospital, in a separate hospital for two months. And then he, he, he died. And it made me reflect, you know, how many old people die, you know, because of construction, you know, near their house, because of the noise. There was uh, between actually the scholar's house and the old man's house was a former prime minister under Kim Young Sang, a very old man with a cane. And there was a stream that ran under his house, which gave him uh, arthritis. He had pain in his bones. So he would often have workers there digging up the ground and trying to fix up the floor so he wouldn't suffer from the water, the cold coming out of the water. And his uh, his wife once came to my house and she knocked on the door and she said her name was Certainty. And, and she gave me a box of, of rice cakes. Cause she said, I'm sorry, we have so much noise. And uh, one day she, she used to drive him around. One day she clipped our wall and knocked off a brick. I still leave it like that because I think of the prime minister's car knocked off a brick in my house. <laughs> And, and then, uh, then he passed away. And she passed away just about a month after him. You know, she looked perfectly fine, but I guess he was her whole life. And the other, and then there was across the street from me was an opera singer. She was a prima donna opera singer. And sometimes she invited me to her concert. She was about 86 years old. She had a little poodle dog 
and, and, and a maid who used to sweep the cherry blossoms off the driveway. And she had a son. And one day also I saw her being carried out in the stretcher. But fortunately she came back and she recovered from whatever happened. But she had a husband and her husband used to carry the dog. Her husband passed away. So I was watching people dying all around me over these years. And on the other side, on my left, there was a man and his wife, and his wife went to a, he was a professor as well, of physiology, and he was 92 years old. And his wife uh, had to go to a nursing home. And he was a, a lonely man. So one day we invited a, him over to our house for a New Year's Day, you know, Lunar New Year's Day. And he ate rice dumplings and white cooked pop, and he was very happy. And, and once we went and had some beer together, but I never wanted to have beer with him again because I saw he liked it so much. I knew it wasn't good for him. And the last year, you know, I was thinking we should invite him again for New Year's Day. But my wife said she was feeling sick, so we didn't. And a couple months later, I looked over the balcony and there's a woman in the yard, his yard, and, and she was burning a stack of papers and the two young ladies. And I said, what's going on? She said, he died. Wow. So almost everybody died around me. And this village used to be called the professor's village because there was houses for professors from EY University and Yonsei University. And, and now most of them are gone. Mostly now it's one room, one room for students, one room for five. So it also made me reflect a lot on my own mortality. So many things happen. Oh, while I was staying there, there was also up on the left side of the house, there was a driveway which went through the trees up to a house of the gardener for Yonsei University. And he had a wife and a daughter. And it was behind a fence. It was like a cottage. It was a very simple old house. And he had lights along the road, like the globes, round lights under the ginkgo trees. And there were many fruit trees going up and around the corner. And it was like a fairy tale place at those lights. And I used to go out and, and, and sit under the tree and I had some cats and they would come out and we'd just, you know, play under the tree. And I remember one day a young woman came and she was afraid to pass. And I just moved back and she passed around. I thought like a princess going to a castle in the sky or something. And she, and she lived there. So I sent my wife the next day to go up and, and talk to the people. And she went up with me. And the woman, the gardener's wife, opened the door. And, my, and she said her daughter worked late at a cafe. And, 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 and she was afraid. And so my wife said, there's no reason to be afraid of me, you know, that I live there. And she appreciated that. And then uh, they had a, a big sheepdog that I found had run away. I found it and I brought it back. And she was happy about that. And then one day they left. The pickup truck came coming down the mountain and the smoke behind the truck, and the man waved at me, and the woman and the daughter were inside, and they went away. And the cottage was all locked up. So that roadway became mine. It's filled with, with the cherries and, and plums and, and blackberries and the various kinds of fruit that I could just, nobody's picking them, so I could have them to myself. Except one day I, I went up there and there's an old woman who was sitting in the grass and between 
it, her legs were two piles. One had the white shells, one had the golden fruit, and I recognized it. I saw that ginkgo, you know, and she looked up at me, kind of confused. And, and then she, I, I could see across the way, there was a fallen tree over the wall, a ginkgo tree. And I wondered how she could have gotten up there. She was a very old woman. And then she reached down and offered me two handfuls of, of ginkgo nuts. She had a third pile, they were green. You know what they look like, ginkgo? Moon hanging? Yeah, yeah, the green and oily. So, what, then the next, another day, there was another woman up there, old woman, who was kind of toshirak, and was, was eating kimchi and, and, and onions. And, and I, I talked to her as well. She was also surprised. These women were in the mid 80s. So, so there, there were some very old women on, on that road, higher up. And, and one day I went there and there was a hiker behind the fence. He said, help me, how do I get out of here? And I, I, I said, well, there's a lock here. How did you get in? And then he, he turned around and walked back the other way. So I started thinking, how did he get in? So I, I, I climbed up the mountain through the trees and it was all fallen trees and vines. And I found a compound and there was a gap in the compound that was broken. So I, I went in and inside by the window of the house was a, a dead black and white cat. It's all dried up. And the, the door was open. Behind the door was this, this Indian uh, uh, figure that, from India that's a many, many sided star. I, I think it's like the Yantra, called the Yantra. And I could see how small and modest, you know, their life, life had been. And, and then when I, I, and the doghouse was turned upside down, the big red, white, and blue doghouse was turned upside down. And I went back through the gap and something grabbed me. So what was it? Somebody grabbed me. And it was a barbed wire, big, thick, rusty barbed wire grabbed my parka. And the, and the feathers were blow, flying out like geese, you know, they're flying out on the wind. So then I, I, I carefully dislodged it myself and, and climbed back, back down. But uh, so every, every springtime, I climb up that roadway when the cherries are ready, the little cherries, and I eat the cherries off the tree. And I pick the raspberries off, off the bushes. That's a, kind of my joy. And when you go up there at night, you can see stars. You can't see stars in the city very well, but from up there, you can see stars. So that's another reason. And something else that was very strange was by the gate had been a, a bench. And behind the bench, there was this figure there's this white hard material that was shaped like a hood and, and, and like a cloak. And it looked like the Grim Reaper. It looked it just standing there, the Grim, you know what the Grim Reaper is? The death, the skeleton of death. So when I go up there, I wouldn't walk all the way over at night because it kind of scared me. It's like, and, and one night, I was walking up and there's a cathedral on the other side of the, uh, the highway, the road that goes in front of Yonsei. There's a, a cathedral and a white cross and it flashed one night. And through my imagination, I felt that the Grim Reaper was flying over the grass and attached itself to my back. It was such a strange feeling, it chills. And I walked back down to my house, just shaking, you know, and got my key to open the door. That was, that was something. So I, I showed it when one of our, uh, when we had the uh, spooky soul tour, that uh, one of our members led the spooky tour, soul tour. So I, 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 I took over that part in my neighborhood, you know, especially about the Grim Reaper up on the hill. So, at one time I was up in the mountain 
behind the uh, Wolan Sa, in front of the Mountain God Shrine, there was a lot of people up there. It was about nine o'clock at night. There were adults and children, and somebody dancing, a woman dancing in, in a dress. So I went up to the man with the COVID mask. I said, what's going on? You know, he said, kindergartners were catching insects. And I guess they had just finished catching insects. So the next year, I just happened to be there at the same night, and I was walking through the forest, and there were all these lights like fireflies here and there. I thought, fireflies, I haven't seen fireflies up here. And they were children. They're wearing fluorescent coats, you know, the green and yellow, and they had flashlights and headlamps, and they had their, they had the, uh, the sticks and the nets, butterfly nets, and they're catching insects. And it's going way up. It looked like something out of, of a fairy tale, like little pixies you know, and the elves, all up in that crawling along the path. And the next year, I came upon them again. And the teacher said, what, you again? You know, I said, that's my good, my good luck, my good fortune. So no matter how many times I go up a mountain, every time something's different. So one time I was up there and a man was, was hugging a tree. He had his head against a tree. I said, what are you doing? So I said, uh, you know, uh, chi, I said, energy. He said, yes, he was a shy man. And I said, how long, you know, what does it do? He says, it clears my head. He said in Korean. And, and I said, how long should you do that? He said, one minute. And I said, any tree, you know, how about that oak tree? No, he said, only pine tree. Pine tree. So that, that's, uh, one time I was there and my, I had eye strain. And I was by a, a, a medicine stream. And I told one of the passerby, I had the eye strain. He said, splash your eyes nine times with the water. So I do that every day, many times a day now. And it works. It's very helpful. And I, I tried. I started taking a class. I took two classes, one uh, animal, uh, plant communication and animal communication online. So just a couple of days ago, I was walking down a, 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 a path. And I saw a bird flying up in the tree. So I stopped. I was feeling a bit lonely. And the bird came down and landed on the branch across from me. And so I, 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 I said, hello. And it went, and I said, uh, you know, what's your name? You know, and then it went, and then it flew off like that. So I thought it knew me, and maybe birds get lonely too, and they're by themselves. So, so it's uh, another 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 thing that happened often was uh, well, once in a while we get visited in our house by rats in the chi. They would come, and so I would catch them. My wife would get during those days. My wife would get very angry. So I would catch them with the, the mousetrap and take them in, in the cat carrier up the mountain so nobody could see what it was in a far away place and face the trap away from me and open it up and let the mouse go off. So I had many excursions with mice of all different sizes, you know, and they each react in different ways freed them here and there, as far away I could be as from people. So during my, and, and, and then when I come down to the temple often at night, I see benches set up or, 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 or chairs set up. And I'd go to the office, there'll be a guard there. And I say, what's going on? And he'd say, well, tomorrow morning, there's going to be a celebration. It's going to be something, I think there was one entrance of spring and they had all the benches. So I would get up at 10 o'clock in the morning early 
I go up the mountain and, and, and attend the, attend the uh, celebration. And, and that was always uh, enriching for me to see that. So that's, uh, and then, then they had candles in the temple, like a big fish tank full of candles where people would go and pray. And I would pass that every night. After a while, I started offering prayers there too. And when you look through it from one side, like from here, reflections go through it up the hill. So you see candles on the other side, way up the hill, and little lights. When it's really far up, you just see the flames. So it's just like candles and flames all the way up there. It's rather, rather beautiful. And, and then one night, one night, uh, I, I had seen a movie. I belonged to a club. We watched a movie once a week on Saturday night and uh, on, in, on Zoom. And uh, we had watched uh, The Innocents, which based on uh, Henry James' uh, 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 story, a ghost story. And uh, I walked up the mountain. And when I was passing, there was a Renaissance villas. I heard a couple of girls laughing and a young man. And it seemed like the laughter was like people in this ghost story in the movie, the children, there were children there who were possessed by ghosts. And uh, I thought that was strange. And when I walked through, against the tree, I saw my mother. My mother died when I was five. I only, I only uh, remember her from pictures. And I thought, oh, that's a projection from the movie. You know, it's black and white. And that was just projection like from the movie. That's why I've seen that. And then I walked further on and I saw my father and he was leaning against the tree. 20 years old. My wife, mother had been about 17 in the picture, my father 20. And that kind of spooked me. I said, ah, oh, that's another projection. It's because I had seen this ghost movie. And, uh, and then I said, come on, mother, come on, father. And I just imagined there by me, I had my arms around him and we walked down through the forest. That's, uh, but that's the only time I never saw I don't know if that was a ghost, but I never thought of ghosts when I was in the mountain at night. I was never afraid. I had my friends, my Korean friends would say, aren't you horrified? Aren't you afraid to go? And you know, and I, I was, no, there's nothing dangerous up there. There's no tigers, there's no snakes, there's no robbers. You know, it's one of the safest places in the world, in fact, up, up, up in the mountain. Long ago, there during the Korean War, the uh, U.S. Marines had come fighting the North Koreans. They marched through Yonsei University. There's holes in Horace Underwood's statue, bullet holes. And then they had a fight on Ansan, that same mountain. They were fighting the North Koreans and the Marines. And, and a, a friend of mine's his next door neighbor was an old man. He said during that time, the pathways were filled with bodies, you know, even civilians up and down. And uh, so, we, it, but the, there weren't any ghosts that I see. Maybe they're gone so long ago. But up in the top, sometimes I would see soldiers, even now, they were digging trenches. They still have trenches up there, you know, in case they need it. You know, and I thought it looks like they're actually at shovels. Maybe they're making a garden. <laughs> so that's uh, it, it's an endless, endless resource. Of the uh, I I never feel bored up there, and whenever I feel at home, I feel lonely or bored or or I'm tired of studying. When I go up there, I always feel refreshed. And the wonder of it all is that it's free. It doesn't cost any money. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you find the beauty, you find the health, you find company, 
you know, it's all there and it, it doesn't cost anything. So how was that time? We're, we're good. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so those are just some stories. I was going to read, you know, I, I wrote poems and essays and things, but I I just had the feeling maybe you would rather just have me talk. I think you don't have to concentrate on well, here. I'd like to read one of your poems for us. Okay, I have many. I'll just do them some short ones. I got the, uh, yeah, something simple. <laughs> Here, a nightingale calls, flits over the water, sips from shore, splashes in and out, can't stay around long. Do you know what calligraphy is? You know the writing? An iris, you know the iris flower? Okay. Iris produces a calligraphic love song on petals. If you look at the iris, you can see there's like writing in there, that little line, like handwriting. Remembered fragrance of a painted woman, our fleshy embrace. Reflecting on the lilies, memories of boys and girls, dolls and clowns who gave life. Under the moon, you climb for a concert. On the footbridge, an audience for frogs. Something funny happened. My my wife said on the radio, it said a, she said a wild pork ran out of the mountain into Yonsei University, and the students chased it, and, and it went to Hongik University, and the students at Hongik University chased it back to Yonsei, and the Yonsei students chased it back up into the Ansan. And I said, You mean a wild pig? Yes, a wild pig. She said a wild pork. <laughs> And, and, and one day I was up there and I was walk, walking in the dark and I heard <laughs> and, and something big ran right across in front of me and I thought, you know, and I ran up the hill and, and it hid in the bushes and I thought, it's the wild pork. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, uh... So there's a little longer short list. You stand over the city. Pearly lit bridges beautify the Han River as it rolls, rolls to the Yellow Sea. A young couple approaches the pavilion. Cover the cooling breeze with your hands. A young couple approaches. Cover the flesh with your hands. A young couple approaches, cover with your hands. It's in the summer, it's so hot. I had taken off my shirt. It was late at night, so I didn't think anybody would be there. No, uh, it's, uh, I have some part of it. Yeah. This was, uh, this is a, just this experience. An odd couple creeps over, sits on a park bench. You glance back, gone. Three young couples appear in the grove and sit on benches. When you glance back, they're gone too. Did you ever had that experience? That, that just people were there and then they're not there anymore. This was uh, an elf walks barefoot up the Akasha path. 
spreading an immense smile, she says, my name's Mako, I'm Japanese Korean. Why are you carrying your sandals? She gestures, the ground pulls off electricity. Stress? Yes, I'm a student. A student, Yonsei University student. So, on an open palm, the gypsy moss tells your fortune. A gold brooch flutters. Did it flitter under or around? Somehow gets away. The gold brooch is a, a moth. There's a moth but that was like, like a brooch. Okay, so, In a dream, the white lotus appears. A raindrop strikes a petal. It goes. Another. Gone. Yeah. So. so do you have any questions? Mm. I, I want to know if you're going to publish any of these ramblings oh or musings. Yeah, I hope to. I, I want to. That's what I'm putting together, like a book. I, okay. I hope to make it a book. And yeah. There's also experiences that I, you know, meeting people here, but we didn't have time to uh, to go in. But uh, yeah, that's my idea to make this a book, and that that would be the title. You know that that would be the title. All their, all their poems. Well, their poems and their little paragraphs uh, is about 150, I guess, 160. Yeah. Yeah. Some are short and some are, are, are like paragraphs, you know, more e explaining things. Uh, for example, uh, uh, this one. Uh, this is a Christmas. This is a winter time. Uh, climbing in and out of a dry stream bed, you witness chestnut elm leaves waving on a sea of snow. Underfoot, coffee au lait curls and milk chocolate swirls crackle. Stepping up, down, cracking a delicious crust, you ago white flakes in a honey chocolate flow. Crunching leaves and snow, it's God's decorated Christmas cake. You scoop up a crusty handful, savor the luscious cream. And that's an experience up there. They, the woods floor became like a cake. Yeah, and then, uh, I, I can I do this one, this last one. Uh, stepping through the woods, listening to the trickling creek, you tread on ice and snow and over a footbridge to the temple courtyard, empty at midnight. It is the winter solstice and eight degrees Fahrenheit. Fish chimes tinkle and jingle from roofs down along the flagstone path, banging as the wind swishes and swirls from all directions, jangling, clanging, comes and goes from corner eaves <clears throat> with swooping roofs open for air to sweep in and clang a clang, jinga jang, jingle jangle, swing the thin bronze fish suspended from iron bells ringing merrily over there off a spacious prayer hall, around yellow and blue dragons comes clinking, clanking, jangling, banging, jingling, tingling, 
clanking ever so cheerfully, happily, and joyously. So one might suppose, rather than a Buddhist temple, this was a Christian church celebrating a white Christmas, hailing the coming of a longer day, and of course, the Savior in whatever form one prefers. You walk out of the temple grounds, jangling and jingling, follow down into the village saying, don't forget, a new day is coming and everything's going to get better. After all, after all is done. <laughs>